In lesson three, we're going to talk about using the keyboard. We'll learn about what all the different keys on the keyboard are and those little lights, and we'll learn how to use most of them. The keyboard, still the most popular way to get data into the computer, as far as I'm concerned. I use the keyboard a whole lot more than I use a mouse. I'm a keyboard guy. So let's talk about all the buttons on the keyboard. First, we have the alphanumeric and symbol keys. These are the most obvious keys on the keyboard, right? QWERTY, K-W-E-R-T-Y, all the numbers, all the little characters, the period, the slash, the backslash, all those things. Now, on a lot of larger keyboards, you'll often find this section over here on the right called the numeric keypad or the numpad. It's designed to give you a separate area where you can either type in numbers or you can use the little arrow keys to move up and down. It's designed to resemble the layout of a calculator and provides a convenient way to input numbers and perform mathematical calculations quickly. In fact, Windows even comes with a calculator app you can use. We'll talk about this guy in more detail in my Windows Beginner 1 class. The numpad is especially useful for tasks that involve extensive numeric data entry, such as accounting, data input, spreadsheet work, all that stuff. Now, not all keyboards have a dedicated numeric keypad. On smaller laptop keyboards, for example, the numeric keypad may be integrated into the main keyboard. Some users may also choose to purchase a separate external USB numeric keypad. The enter or return key is used to execute commands or actions, such as starting a new line in a document, submitting a form online, confirming a selection, all kinds of things. This is the enter key or the return key. If you are in a word processing program like Microsoft Word or this one, which is WordPad, it comes at Windows 11, if you are at the end of a document, for example, you can press the Enter key to move down. See that? I'm moving the cursor down. We'll talk about the cursor in just a minute. This guy here is the space bar, one of the most fundamental and frequently used keys on the keyboard. It's typically the largest key and is centrally located on the bottom of the keyboard. It's got a very critical yet simple function to create a space between words or characters when typing. So as I'm typing here, right, Captain Space Kirk, space also rules, right? Now, for those of you who are old school and learn how to type on a typewriter back in school, we no longer put two spaces after a period or an exclamation point or any of that stuff, okay? Modern day fonts will give you a little bit of extra space between your sentences like that. So just one space. This guy on the keyboard is the backspace key, and it erases characters to the left of the cursor. All right, so if I press the backspace key right now, it's erasing to the left. See that? And there's also a delete key that deletes to the right of the cursor. So if I take my mouse and move it in front of Kirk and click right there, okay, and if I hit the delete key, it deletes to the right of the cursor. That's the difference between backspace and delete. The tab key is used for indentation or to move between different fields on a form or a dialog box. The escape key is commonly used to cancel or close dialogs, pop up windows, or exit full screen modes. Here, for example, I got this pop up window and I don't know what I want to do with it. So I can either click cancel or I can hit escape on my keyboard and that will close most of those pop-up windows. A lot of larger keyboards will also have a separate set of keys that are arrows. And you can use those to navigate within documents, websites. You can use them to move the cursor or highlight items in different directions. On bigger keyboards, you got those. And on smaller keyboards, especially on laptops, you'll find the arrow keys integrated into the numeric keypad, as I mentioned earlier. Now to switch between the arrows or the numbers on the numeric keyboard, you press the numlock key. And a lot of keyboards will either have a special numlock light or the button itself will have a little light on it. A lot of laptops look like that. So I can use the arrow keys to go up, left, right, or down throughout my document. 
And if I press the numlock key, now the numeric keypad will put in numbers instead of those arrow keys, right? And I'll turn the numlocks back off and I'll backspace over those to get rid of them. There we go. Function keys, often labeled F1 to F12, are usually located in the top row of most computer keyboards. Each function key serves a specific purpose and their functionality can vary depending on the software or even the operating system you're using. For example, F1 is usually associated with the help function. When pressed, it opens up a context sensitive help menu, providing assistance and information related to the active application or whatever function you happen to be working on. F5 is widely used to refresh or reload the current page or document, especially in web browsers. It'll reload the web page. And again, the function keys may be assigned differently depending on whatever application you're working with. On laptop keyboards, the function keys often serve dual roles due to the limited space available. They might have special functions assigned to them in addition to their primary actions. To access those secondary functions, you sometimes need to hit a modifier key such as the FN or function key. When the function key is pressed in combination with the actual function key, it activates the secondary function associated with that key. This confuses a lot of people. The special functions may vary depending on the laptop model and manufacturer, but some common examples of the weird uses of function keys include brightness control. For example, you'd press the FN key in combination with F5 and F6 to increase or decrease the brightness of the screen. Other keys may control the laptop's volume, on-off condition of the wireless connection, and so on. Sometimes the FN key gives you the actual function key like F1, and sometimes it's mapped to that special secondary function key. It depends on the laptop manufacturer. You can sometimes switch that but it involves going into the computer's settings, which is a little more advanced. And again, it's, it's different for each laptop, so I'm not gonna cover that today, but look in your laptop manual or consult your laptop's manufacturer, and I'm sure they'll give you instructions on how to do that. On most keyboards, you're gonna have three, maybe more, modifier keys. The typical ones are Control, Alt, and Shift. You may have two sets of them, one on the left and one on the right side of the keyboard, or just one, depending on your computer. The shift key is used to type uppercase letters and the secondary functions of certain keys, such as typing symbols above the numbers. So if I press the letter A key, I get a lowercase a. If I hold down the shift key and press A, I get a capital A. Likewise, if I press the number one key, I get a one. If I hold down the shift key and press the number one, I get an exclamation point. See how that works? And there's that again. If you want an exclamation point, press and hold the shift key, press the key that has number one on it, and there's your exclamation point. Likewise, the control and alt keys work very similarly to the shift key. They're used in combination with other keys to execute shortcuts or perform specific tasks. For example, control and C is used to copy text to the Windows clipboard. And then control V is used to paste it. For example, here in my document again, I can select Star Trek with my mouse and then press Control C to copy that to the clipboard. And now if I come down here, I can now press Control V and it pastes it from the clipboard. That's copy and paste. And again, we'll talk a lot more about this in my Windows Beginner class. One special key combination is Control Alt Delete and it's also known as the Three Fingered Salute. Now, back in the old days, if you did control alt delete it just rebooted the computer back in the old DOS days, right? Nowadays, it's used to perform various system level functions. It brings up this screen where you can lock the computer, switch users, sign out, change your password, and so on. And again, I'm going to go into this in a lot more detail in my Windows beginner class. Yes, folks, don't beat me up when I mention that I'm gonna cover something in a future lesson. Right now, I'm just kind of introducing these topics. I can't cover everything all at once. People always say that, hey, you say that too much. You're gonna cover this in a future lesson. Yeah, when we, when we get to this screen, we're gonna cover it in more detail. That's how, that's how training works, right? 
The caps lock key toggles the keyboard between all uppercase letters and all lowercase letters. So when you toggle this, it toggles on and off. When it activates, all the letters you type in will be uppercase until you turn it back off again. Most keyboards have a little light tells you if caps is on. Sometimes the light is on the key itself. So back in my document, if I put the caps lock on, if I type now without even holding down the shift key, everything is like I'm shouting, <laughs> right? In fact, I made a slide for this. Don't type in all caps online. <laughs> People will yell at you for shouting at them. So what I'll do now is I'll hit caps lock again, and now I'm back to lower case. Okay, see how that works? There's a special key that Microsoft introduced called the Windows key. And the Windows key is found on most modern computer keyboards, especially those designed for Windows. <laughs> you may have one or two of them depending on your keyboard. I think most modern keyboards only come with one. It looks like the little Windows logo, right? The little four pane window, whatever that is. It provides various shortcuts. For example, one of the primary functions of the Windows key is to open up the start menu that provides access to frequently used apps, settings, and files on your Windows computer. Windows key plus L, that means you hold down the Windows key and press, press the L key, that will lock the computer and switch back to the logon screen for security. So if you're getting up and going to grab a cup of coffee, go Windows key L and it'll lock your computer. I'm old school. I do the old thing, which is you press Control, Alt, Delete, and then Spacebar does the same thing. I always forget to use Windows L. And there's tons and tons of other shortcut keys and tricks that I'm going to teach you. And again, guess what? I'm going to cover those in future lessons in the Windows classes. Some older keyboards, you're going to see this thing called a right-click key. It's also known as the context menu key. It's not, you don't see it that, that many uh, on new computers. Um, it used to simulate a right-click from the mouse. But again, I haven't seen this on a computer in a long time now. Okay, some of the weird keys. There's a key called the insert key. Sometimes it's abbreviated INS. Its primary function is to control the way that text is inserted while typing. When you press the insert key, it toggles between two modes, insert and overtype. Now, insert mode is the default mode for most applications. New characters are inserted at the cursor position, the insertion point, and it pushes existing text to the right. When you turn off insert mode, you go into overtype mode, the text will be overwritten as you type, replacing the existing characters at the cursor position. So for example, I'm in my document. If I click right here, as I type, it pushes characters right. Okay, see how that works? Now, I'm gonna press the insert key. Now, as I type, it overwrites existing text. See how that works? That's the difference between insert and overtype. Do you want to replace what's there or just push it to the right? Now I'm going to turn the insert mode back on and now I'm back to normal. That's usually how word processors work. But it's another common question I get asked all the time. What does that insert key do? Well, now you know. On laptops and compact keyboards, you'll see that the insert key is either absent or integrated into, into other keys such as a secondary function key, like here's the scroll lock key. The end key is pretty much the opposite of the home key. It moves you to the end of a line of text or control end moves to the end of a document. All right, let's start here again. I'll click right there. If I hit the end key, I go to the end of the line. If I press control end, I go to the end of the document. Very handy if you're typing. Do you have to remember these? No, I'm just demonstrating them for now. We'll go over them again in the Windows classes. And if you take my Microsoft Word or Excel classes, we'll use those keys a lot too. The more I repeat them to you, the more likely you are to remember them as well. I don't remember all these shortcut keys myself. It took years and years for me to get a lot of these to stick, right? Sometimes I even look them up. A lot of keyboards will have a print screen button, sometimes abbreviated as PRTSC or PRTSCN. Now, back in the old days, this key used to send whatever text was on the screen directly to the printer because computers originally just used to be just lines of text. They didn't have images and graphics and pictures and stuff. 
Today, the print screen button serves a specific function related to capturing and saving the contents of the screen, but it doesn't send it right to the printer. It just saves it to the Windows clipboard. Now, this generally includes everything visible on the current screen, open windows, applications, the desktop itself, any active content. Now, normally the captured screenshot is not saved directly to a file, so it might appear that nothing happens. Instead, again, it's stored to the computer's clipboard. You can then open up another application like Paint or Word or whatever and paste that inside. The SysRQ key, short for System Request, is a key found on some computer keyboards, typically located right around or even on the print screen button. On most modern keyboards, you won't find a SysRec key anymore. It's been gone. <laughs> But once in a while, you'll still see one. I just looked around my office. I don't even have a SysRec key on any of my laptop keyboards. I've got an old desktop keyboard that's got one, though. Now, the SysRec key used to, it originated in the old days of computer systems when they used to be, it used to send specific low-level commands to the operating system. It could be used for diagnostics or debugging purposes. But, uh, yeah, if you see one of these today, just ignore it and and please just stop asking me what it does, everybody. Everyone always asks, what does this key do? I don't know. It doesn't work anymore. Just, just ignore it. Leave it alone. <laughs> just like the pause break key. All right. Now, again, back in the old days, when you used to execute a command, like a DOS level command at the, at the screen, you'd get, you'd get text that would just scroll by, sometimes too fast for you to read. So you could use the pause break key to pause the output of that text and allow you to read it. Now with modern systems, Windows 11, the pause break key really doesn't have a specific universal function anymore. Some applications do use it. Uh, pressing control pause break can sometimes pause or halt certain processes in a command prompt window. Uh, certain video games or media players will use it to pause music playback, for example. And I've seen some specialized accessibility functions that will use pause break. Um, or you can use it to launch certain macros or, or run other commands. But again, it doesn't have a specific purpose anymore. There's the scroll lock key, which again, you don't find on a lot of keyboards nowadays. The scroll lock key was originally used in early computer systems to control the scrolling behavior of text on the screen. When it was activated, it would lock the screen display, allowing you to navigate within the document or spreadsheet without changing the position of the cursor. So it would lock the document. You can scroll up or down. That's why they call it a scroll lock. But again, now with Windows 11, scroll lock it almost isn't used anymore. Next up are page up, page down. And again, you might have dedicated page up and page down keys, or they could be integrated into your numeric keypad. Page up allows you to scroll up or move the content on the screen up one page. And page down moves... Um, down a page. <laughs> These are very handy in spreadsheet programs, word processors. You can use them online in a web browser. If you got a big document that goes up and down, like a, you know, a, a page that's multiple screens, you can use page up and page down instead of scrolling up and down with the scroll bar. And finally, some keyboards have special purpose buttons that are unique to that computer. There's a sleep button, a wake up button, a power button. Um, your laptop might have other different buttons that are specific to that particular computer. So be sure to check the documentation that came, came with your machine to find out more about what these do. So that's it. That's your ride through using the keyboard. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about using the mouse.